Welcome to this brand new edition of the Take for Thursday, January 19, 2018. I'm your host, Kendra Dix, and this is the 20th episode of the Take. So it's glad to see you here, here on Connect TV. Use the hashtag Take, but let's get to the big story. The big story of the week is this, President Donald Trump made headlines this week and made this crazy announcement crazy having all these people from shithole countries come here the president said today at the white house his comments reported first by the washington post confirmed by cnn and amazingly not denied by the president or the people around him tired of america of africans and haitians the president went on to say he would like to bring more people from countries like norway norway whose population is overwhelmingly of Nordic descent, white people in other words. James Baldwin, the great writer, the great American, once said that, quote, ignorance allied with power is the most ferocious enemy justice can have. Ignorance allied with power. For the President of the United States to believe that Haitians have not contributed extraordinary things to American society, that is ignorant. For him to claim that all the countries of Africa are shitholes is woefully ignorant. But as disturbing as you may think these sentiments are, these comments by the president, they are actually not anything new. Three weeks ago, the New York Times reported something else the president said about Haitians in another meeting at the White House. About Haitians, he reportedly said they, quote, all have AIDS, and said that Nigerians, quote, live in huts. Now, the White House denied he said those things at the time three weeks ago. They are not denying he said the comments today, which were spoken in a room with bipartisan lawmakers. Perhaps the White House feels the president's remarks will be well received in some parts of this country, among some parts of the president's base. And perhaps that is true. But it doesn't make what he said any less ignorant or any less racist. Not racial, not racially charged, racist. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's not pretend or dance around it. The sentiment the president expressed today is a racist sentiment. What in the world is wrong with him? <laughs> I mean... This man has to be one of the craziest U.S. presidents in history. I haven't seen a president say a outlandish, obscene remark. Man, it, it's just it getting all out of hand, out of proportion. People who were in the room with the president when the president was supposed to give out diplomacy about countries and stuff. And... If you don't believe me, take a look who was with the room with him. Senator Dick Durbin had confirmed this. As Senator Graham made his presentation, the president interrupted him several times with questions. And in the course of his comments, uh, said things which were hate-filled, vile, and racist. He used those words advisedly. I understand how powerful they are. But I cannot believe that in the history of the White House, in that Oval Office, any president has ever spoken the words that I personally heard our president speak yesterday. You've seen the comments in the press. I have not read one of them that's inaccurate. To no surprise, the president started tweeting this morning denying that he used those words. It is not true. He said these hate-filled things, and he said them repeatedly. Yes, he did confirm what the president had said. Was it wrong? Was it? Yes, it was wrong. Even House Speaker Paul Ryan was nervous and did not know how to approach the situation. Take a look. The president said something yesterday. Or reported. He said a lot of things yesterday. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> it's a word I can't mention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's about African yeah, countries. Yeah, yeah. It's about immigration, which which is tied into your job because well, you have uh, a week from now. There's another uh, deadline on the government shutdown. Immigration's a big part of that. Uh, his comments obviously inflame yeah. uh, a, a debate that's not hard to inflame, but right. you know. So really, yeah, I, was, I, I, spent the, I spent my day on 702 yesterday, so I wasn't sure what you were talking about, which is a, um, a FISA thing. Yeah, I, I read those comments later last night. Uh, so first thing that came to my mind was very unfortunate, um, unhelpful, 
Um, but you know what I thought of right away? I thought about my own family. Uh, my family, um, like a whole lot of people, uh, came from Ireland on what they called coffin ships then. Yes, it's very unfortunate. You're right. But it's very unfortunate for the Republican Party to clean up this mess because the Republican Party don't know what to say, what to do, how to make this PR crisis come to an end because the president is loud, obnoxious, and just don't give up flying you know what. And because of this, it's going to be a long, hard way to clean this up because President Trump ain't backing away. The White House ain't backing away. The Republican Party, you might well say, they at a standstill. Don't know what to do. And the Democrats saying apologize. And other countries are saying apologize too. Well, you can see those tweets that the president had um, made and stuff like that. Well, since the president called countless countries that word that we're not going to use here is we're going to call it expletive. Well, people are going, showing, and telling the, wor the world how he thinks, how the world operates without him thinking that way. Take a look. The president quickly responded to Twitter and denied that vulgar remark. Vulgar, obscene. I get it. <laughs> Even though you can be the president of the United States, you can also be wrong in your own viewpoints, your own opinions. But um, this president just don't care. He feels like he's the king of the United States and this is his castle and many people are not buying it one bit at all. You have, and then you gotta look at it. You have some good apples, you have some bad apples. They're just human beings just like the president is. And, you know, he got his views and opinions, and they got their views and opinions, and nobody ain't trying to back off. That's why um, the United States is, is kind of like, we in the standstill. Believe me, because he don't want to apologize too much. But well, speaking of that, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii has suffered a emergency situation, thinking that it was... Missiles and stuff were going to strike, but it didn't come out to be. Take a look. President seen running for cover, families hiding in bomb shelters. Take a listen. This is not a drill. Take immediate action measure. The dire warning of a ballistic missile threat buzzing on cell phones stripped across television screens. Residents told to seek immediate shelter. Quote, this is not a drill. It took 38 minutes for some people to get the all clear. The message, a human error false alarm. And it comes just weeks after Hawaii reinstated a Cold War era missile alert system in the event of an attack by North Korea following Kim Jong-un's repeated tests. In Hawaii tonight, the governor saying an employee at shift change is to blame. But there are so many questions still. And ABC's Stephanie Ramos starts us off from the Pentagon. Hawaiians fleeing after waking up this morning to a nightmare scenario. The message sent at 8.07 this morning on TV, radios, and going out on cell phones reading, ballistic missile threat inbound, seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. The warnings left an entire state terrified. We were up on a mountain and we almost like fell off of it trying to get to our children. People pulling over in tunnels, confused tourists hunkering down in hotels. People are hiding in tunnels. People are, are locking down their homes. They're heading for the mountains. One mother saying her daughter was away at a slumber party when the alert went out. She's like, Mom, what are we supposed to do? And I'm like, uh, all right, stay there. Um, if something happens, no matter what, do not leave that house. Families filling up their bathtubs with water and stocking up on supplies. The people of Hawaii have been on edge in recent months as North Korea's Kim Jong-un moves closer to perfecting a nuclear-tipped missile. Just last month, Hawaii tested their nuclear attack warning sirens for the first time since the 1980s. But this alert was not real. Twelve minutes after the alert, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard was the first public official to say this is a false alarm in a tweet. Yes, you got all the people in Hawaii going crazy, 
saying, oh no, we're going to be punished. President Trump just in the golf course, just playing golf like he is. I'm telling you, <laughs> what is this world coming to? What in the world is going on? And we don't know. <laughs> we just don't know. All right. That big story came in. Um, you know, this story sealed, singer sealed. As we put out our big story last week, that Oprah might consider run for president. Still chimed in and said what Oprah can do and what Oprah can say. But take a look at this crazy remark Seal said. Take a look. Hi, everyone. First of all, let me apologize for the delayed response. And secondly, for the less than perfect lighting. Um, I'm out in the Alps and I just got home after a day's riding. So please bear with me. Now let's get straight to it. Let me start by saying that I have an enormous amount of respect for everything that Oprah has achieved and contributed in her life. What I reposted was not an attack on Oprah at all. She just happened to be the person photographed with the pig in the picture. No, what I reposted was commentary on the hypocritical and double standard nature and behavior of Hollywood. So Fox News, back off but I'll get to you later. Next, to those of us who support the Me Too movement, just know this, not one of the women who have been sexually abused, not one of the women who have come forward has received any real justice whatsoever. Losing your job because you either A, raped, B, sexually abused, or even sexually harassed a woman is not real punishment. You steal from the post office, you go to jail. And hashtag real talk for a second, we all know what would happen to any one of those power abusers if they looked like me. Next, somebody posted a comment on this post saying, calling me an Uncle Tom, saying, quote, they were disappointed to see a brother tearing a sister down, end of quote. So let me get this straight. In order to promote social awareness dialogue on this particular subject, I repost, not create, but repost a meme that appeared on my social feed. And now all of a sudden, it's a brother tearing down a sister issue. Let me make something abundantly clear to you. I am English born, but don't get that baby kiss from a rose stuff twisted. And he put his own signature song in what he was trying to point across and got his viewpoint across. One day my seal seal might get got rid might have to live with don't have to live with Holly Kuhn no more, but he had to deal with her just because of the kids. But seal just gonna say, I'm gonna point my opinion the way if you do or you don't, if you don't like it, whatever. Alright, seal beat <laughs> I'll do a rose. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy. All right. In other news, a thief stolen the Alabama Crimson Tide playbook while they was in Atlanta. You can see right here on these pictures. Look at them covering himself in the hood and don't want to be seen, don't want to be heard, don't want to be noticed. Now, I know people l hate Alabama. We got some people that's just like crashing in and love to see them in their downfall. But how cheap, how tacky can you be stealing somebody else's playbook and like, there, I'm gonna steal that playbook now. They ain't gonna know how to play position. The quarterbacks they ain't gonna know what the coordinate and the, the defensive coordinators ain't gonna know how to execute that play. Even Nick Saban gonna go crazy all the time, but that's what he does all the time. So ain't no different, no secret to that. <laughs> but. People are looking for this dude and do wherever you are. You still didn't get the job done. Alabama won with or without the playbook. <laughs> Even Jalen Hurts had got a lot of backlash for missing some plays. But Jalen came out the belly end where um, the the run up quarterback, the the Hawaiian kid, came in and shut social media down and told them, hey. Social media, leave Jalen Hurts alone. Jalen Hurts appreciated that. And you see right there, 
You cannot break the bond of two friends. You can't. Uh, cannot. All right. When we return on the tape, we're going to have more. I'm Kid Dix, and we're watching the tape. Stay tuned. to the tape for Thursday, January 19th, 2018. I'm about to say 17. I'm laughing myself a year last. I'm so glad 2017 is over. I can just finally view like that. All right, let's move on. In celebrity news, Mary J. Blige celebrated her birthday in a big way. And I mean a tremendous way. I mean in a special way. Blige was in L.A. with who know who did he? Who claims he's gonna buy the Panthers and claims he's brother love? Well, speaking of that, Blige was in town and she received a Walker, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Blige was crying. Just take a look. Mary J. Blige, accomplished singer, Grammy winner, so millions of albums, singles, you know, lady who had song after song, received a Hollywood Walk of Fame, finally, finally Mary J. can stop with all that crying, because Mary J. been battling a lot with alcoholism, abuse, um, drugs, you name Mary J. been through it. Mary J. Even going to custody battle with her husband, her husband trying to get more money out of her like never before. Okay, Mary J. Blige said, Mom, not the time. There you go. Not worth a lie to Mary J. Blige. Congratulations. <laughs> Alright, let's move over to Talk Show's Talk Show's report. On Talk Show's Talk Show report, on the Wendy Williams show, Wendy Williams questioned whether those ongoing rumors about O.J. Simpson being the father of Khloe Kardashian. Now, many let's go to a backstory where O.J. Simpson and Robert Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian's father, were on his murder trial, and he helped them eventually won, but. Many people thought that OJ was sleeping around with Chris, who was Robert's wife at the time, and that was Chloe. And there's the eerie resemblance that OJ Simpson's daughter looks exactly like Chloe Kardashian, and they put the two, two together. But hey, Wendy Williams had this to say. Take a look. Four months. I don't think that he surrounds himself by the right people. He goes out too much and he falls into traps that people perhaps might want to set him up for. You know, whether it's a, a woman trap or, you know, a bunch of guys who, I, I don't know. Anyway, but he wants to clear the air. He says that he is not Khloe Kardashian's father. <laughs> well, the rumors have been going around for years. I married their two names and called her Chloe J. Uh, but alas, OJ and Chris, they did have an affair 34 years ago behind uh, Robert Kardashian's back, allegedly, allegedly. And uh, two of Robert's ex-wives alleged that on his deathbed, Robert's, he confessed that Chloe was not his child. Oh. Does Chloe look like Robert? Does Chloe look like Kim? No. Does Chloe look like OJ? Yes! Yeah. 
Well, OJ was spotted out and about um, in his dad jeans <laughs> and, and a Buffalo Bills uh, jersey. You know, he used to play for them. And his daughter, Arnell. And he set the record straight. Take a look. Congratulations in order. For what? We hear Chloe finally announced that she's pregnant. <laughs> well, for my, for God, God bless his soul. Yeah. Uh, but really? I don't know for me. I don't think for me. I have nothing to do with it. I'm uh, happy for him. Uh, congratulations to her. But trust me, I have nothing to do with it. Well, you've lied to us before, OJ. What is this? Is this Mari Povich? Wendy Williams? This is this is your show. You stick to gossiping and let Mari Povich stick to the baby daddy and the DNA and all that stuff. That's that's why it's a theme on the shows. You you stick to the gossip side, the entertainment side, and you let leave it to Mari to stick with that that ongoing crap. <laughs> I get it all the time where when people try to say, who's the father, who's the father? Man, just don't know. But when the women on her place, she just was trying to test the wars and see could she do what Mari do. Uh, stick to gossip. <laughs> all right, on the political rundown this week, we continue our story on the big story on President Trump saying that word. Well... The president was going to celebrate ML King Day this past week and the reporters, the media, they didn't have they didn't hesitate. They asked the question, President Trump, are you a racist? They and look at the president's response. Through his bravery and sacrifice, Dr. King opened the eyes and lifted the conscience of our nation. He stirred the hearts of our people to recognize the dignity written in every human soul. Today we celebrate Dr. King for standing up for the self-evident truth Americans hold so dear that no matter what the color of our skin or the place of our birth, we are all created equal by God. Yeah, President Trump is saying, I'm here to do, sign a proclamation. I'm here to Honor Dr. King, and you media wants you the media wants the president to elaborate. <laughs> president Trump saying, "I spoke about Martin Luther King, and he left before annoying questions." President Trump is like, I, "I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore with this." He like, "I thought the job of president was easy, not hard." President Trump is learning how to learn on the go with the job. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, let's move on to Newsies. On Newsies this week, um, Georgia fans are still suffering the loss of losing to Alabama. And their media reports are still trying to ponder what it's going to take to get Georgia off the hump and perhaps go against Alabama next year. Who knows? Take a look. Sides of the street. The Georgia Bulldogs got a rock star's welcome home from the college football playoff national championship game at Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Uh, dog Nation is, we got the best fans ever. Some of these fans took a day off from work. Others skipped classes just to be here. The dogs need the love, so. <laughs> so it was worth skipping class. Totally, absolutely. Anything for the dogs, really. <laughs> Including this little guy who gave sophomore receiver Nicole Hardman this piece of art. You know, we got a lot of support from you know, from the fans, and we love all each and every one of them. And um, it's just you know good to see them you know still support us through the, you know through the loss. In return for the love, seven-year-old Dylan Davis got a signed football. I felt good to support him. Maybe he'll do good next game. And that's exactly the sentiment of so many fans who are taking the heartbreaking loss in overtime to Alabama in stride, saying there's always next year. Hey, good game. We lost, but hey. They had a good season. Go down. Georgia put a valiant effort. But at the end, Alabama won. Hey, there's always next year. So, hey, there might be another rematch. Who knows? Things could look good in Georgia's favor if everything, if they, if they play their cards right. <laughs> 
All right, and finally, here on the take, the Vow video of the week. On the Vow video of the week, man, we scouted all over and saw this amazing 22 year old, 22 month old boy called named Ashton. And he could be the next big phenom or next big thing in baseball. And he has a bad swing that no one cannot deny because he hits it like he is. Take a look. Oh, jeez. Nice one. Good job. Like young Ashton is on a roll and MLB look out in 2034 this boy's gonna come and gonna become swinging with a baseball bat in hand you just don't know he's gonna I'm telling you he's gonna be the next big thing and I'm saying like I'm Paul Heyman to Brock Lesnar that little boy's gonna see his father prepping him training him getting him going that's gonna be him in the next couple of years mark my word Braves, get them <laughs> before you know it. All right, that ends the take for this week. Hey, we 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 gave you something more, but we'll see you next week. Shut up.